Okay, in this video, we're going to do a practical project which sorts boxes based on their height. First, let me press this push button to test the final project. Well, the belt conveyor moves boxes, but this pusher pushes large boxes on this chute conveyor. Let me stop the system. Note that, I can use these push buttons to start and stop this sorting system. Remember, in the previous video, I explained how an OPC server can be used to connect the design system inside factory I.O. to my PLC. Well, here we can also see tag's value, and also how many times a tag is changed. Okay, before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content. I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start with this system, which was designed during the previous video. First, let me add another chute conveyor. Now, let's add a diffuse sensor. It will detect large boxes. Now, let me use a pusher. It will push large boxes on the second inserted chute conveyor. Let's test the system manually. As I mentioned before, the inserted sensor must detect large boxes. But, its height is too high. Now, it cannot detect any boxes. Also, I must modify the pusher position. Now, let's test the system again. Let me select the sensor tag, and then start the belt conveyor. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see, the sensor has detected this large box. Note that, the box is not in front of the pusher. Therefore, the system must wait, the large box passes from the sensor, and reaches the pusher. Therefore, I will use a falling edge trigger inside the PLC program, to detect when the sensor will turn off, in other words, when its related value in the PLC program, changes from 1 to 0. After that, the pusher must be activated to push large boxes. Note that, the pusher has two sensors to detect the state of the pusher. When the pusher arm is opened, the sensor with this tag, pusher front limit, will be 1. So, I will use a rising edge trigger inside the PLC program, to detect this changing. Because, after this state, the pusher must be turned off. Ok, let me start the belt conveyor. As you see, the sensor detects large boxes, but small boxes are not detected by the sensor. Because small boxes must be moved to the end of the belt conveyor. Now, let's extend this PLC program from the previous video. If you remember, I used that to start the belt conveyor. Now, let me add suitable symbols. Note that, usually, a simple coil is used, when a switch is connected to the PLC. Because a switch latches its last state. But in industries, push buttons are usually used to start or stop a process. So, to use this real push button, and also this virtual push button, let's use a set coil. As you know, when a set coil is energized once time to turn on an output, it stays latched until its condition is reset or unlatched by a reset coil. Now, let me modify the PLC input address and connect it to this push button. Similarly, I can use a reset coil to stop the belt conveyor. Note that, I want to connect this memory to this push button, which is a normally close push button. So, I need to use a normally close contact, to have my desired result. Try to test this PLC program which is connected to these push buttons. Let me explain the last state. In normal conditions, this push button is close. So the 24 volt DC can reach the X3 input. So this normally close contact changes its state, and will be open. Thus, inside the PLC program, the virtual power won't reach the Y3 output. So, this output will be off in normal conditions. But if I press the last push button, with the same logic, the Y3 output will be on. Let's continue. Now, let me add suitable comments. Now, let's have another network to turn on and off the pusher. As I mentioned before, I want to turn on the pusher, when the sensor signal value in the PLC program, changes from 1 to 0. So, I will need to use a falling edge trigger contact to start the pusher. Note that, in real conditions, a real sensor is connected to a real digital input, but as I explained in the previous video, this virtual sensor inside the factory I.O. software, cannot change a digital input address inside the PLC program. So, I'll connect it to this bit, M2, of the PLC memory. Similarly, let's use a rising edge trigger contact to detect when the pusher arm is opened completely. Note that, later, I'll connect the M3 address to the sensor of the pusher. As I mentioned before, I will use this contact to reset, in other word, return the pusher arm to its initial position.
All right, my program has been completed based on this system. Now, let's add two outputs. A warning lights and then an alarm siren. Again, let's modify the PLC program based on two inserted outputs. I want to turn on and off the warning lights, like the belt conveyor. So, I can use another set and reset coil beside the belt conveyor coils. Note that, I want to turn on the alarm siren, only when a start push button is pressed. So, I don't want to latch its state. I need to use a simple coil for this output, so, I only need to use one reset coil in the next network, to turn off the warning light. Alright, this the final program in this video. Let me just add the third network comments. As you know, comments and symbols are arbitrary, but help us to understand the program. Now, let me compile and download the program to my PLC, like previous videos. Note that, before downloading the PLC program, I need to close the OPC server from the previous video, and disconnect Kepsiver software. Because, in my computer, both Kepsiver and COMMGR software use the same COM port. Alright, the program has been transferred to my PLC. Now, let's select another driver. Because I want to use this port with Kepsiver X software. Okay, we have seen how the PLC data can be sent to the OPC server. Now, I want to access used addresses inside the PLC program. Let's start with the memory addresses. I've defined this tag related to the M0. Now, let's create another tag related to the M1. Note that, I want to connect this memory bit, to this stop push button. Also, the Modbus address related to the M0 is 002049. So the Modbus address for the next memory bit, M1, is 002050. Similarly, let's define other necessary tags. Now, like the previous video, let's click on the quick client icon. As you see, the quality connection for all defined tags is good. Let's back to factory IO software. Again let's select the driver's item under the file menu, and click on browse item to find all tags inside the selected OPC server, which started with the delta word. Now, I can connect factory I.O. equipment to these tags, which are connected to the PLC program through the OPC server. Alright, the sorting box project has been complete. I've tested before. In the next video, this project will be improved using timer and counter instructions. Thanks for watching my content, 
If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.